to movie reviews and this is the 12th and final episode of the fourth series and this review I am looking at sort of abomination of a movie and this is called The Great Rock and Roll Swindle from 1980. This well technically it's well it's, it's not really a film it's a documentary or, or a mockumentary this is all to do with the Sex Pistols. And, well, not particularly on the Sex Pistols, it's to do with the rise and fall of Sex Pistols in the eyes of their manager, Malcolm McLaren. So this film has, well, it's been f filmed from a couple of years now, since probably since the late, in the late 70s, since 78. Very much, though parts have been filmed, like, from 76 and 77. It's sort of like, it's like a collage of film clips, very much, and in the cuts with Malcolm McLaren and that sort of thing. And... It's directed by Julian Temple, who I did a review of one of his films before, which was Absolute Beginners. This is one of his early movies, this is, and you got to give him credit, but so it, because it's with Malcolm McLaren as well, he had big, he had sort of like ideas of this, mo of this movie to do with the rest of all the Sex Pistols. However, it's in, it's in his execution, it's just all over the place. It's an absolute total mess, this movie, completely. Um... So, like I said, it was recorded, it was filmed in different parts in diff through diff different years, mainly in 78 and 79. Though, the interesting thing about this movie is, before the film came out, the soundtrack was released first in July 1979. Uh, people didn't know what this was. I mean, people thought it was another Sex Pistols record. However, when you look at the contents of the soundtrack, um, you've got other songs, you've got like a normal, normal version of the UK, you've got orchestral versions of Ian Man, God Save the Queen, you've got... Um, a song which is on by a, like a, a funk band, which is a medley of other Sex Pistols songs. You've got a song called Yoko Bambi with every two Paul singing with orchestral blasting out. You've got cover versions of like the Who Substitute. You've got Rock Around the Clock, Come On Everybody, something else. Uh, Don't Give Me Up No Child. Um, mm -mm, I'm Not Your Stepping Stone. Um, Johnny Be Good. I mean that's just all the place and some other songs. Like another sex was song that was played live that was never recorded, which was Bells, Songs and Gas. Though it's it's known as M, was L by Vaughan or something in this, on the soundtrack, and another version which, which was done by Ronnie Briggs and another song they did called No One No One called No One Is Innocent. Other songs like Freaking in the Rigging, My Way, Cover Version of My Way. Um, yeah, if you well if you listen to, and a French version of Anime UK as well. It is just, that soundtrack's all over the place, jeez. I mean, I don't know how many times I've listened to that, but it's just all over the place. Um, same with the film as well. So, this film's got a bit of a narrative as well, which is pointless, very much. I mean, you've got Steve Jones, the guitarist Steve Jones, as a private investigator searching Mark McLaren of where he's been. He's trying to sign his sex pistols to major labels, which happened at the time, and also just get the money that he wants, you know, like, get, like he has a sh he, honestly, he and Helen Troy, for all reasons, just try, you know, just do like money making schemes to get the sex pills and get more money and get more reputation. Yeah, good reputation. Okay. Uh. Um, and then you got intercuts, in, intercut with different scenes, you know, with Steve Jones obviously doing other stuff like searching apartment buildings, which is quite weird actually, because you he goes to a apartment building and there's other stuff going on, like some man's getting whipped and they bolt in a lion cage or something. And you go, and you got the song Lonely Boy, the song, his own, one of his own songs, Lonely Boy, kicks in with when he meets a woman in some, like a tube type bed covered with curtains, you know, just craw, you know, like, you know, uh, it's just awful, it's just a place. And then you got Paul Cook being harassed by the police when he picks them up in the middle of the countryside and he gets moonshined and gets, gets his car taken off him. And um, you've got Sid Vicious uh, doing other stuff like, You've got you've got him in his underpants singing something else in his underpants, scratching his bollocks and all that sort of stuff, driving his motorbike, drinking beers, and then doing another song, which is "Come on, everybody, driving on the motorbike in the middle of the country." And obviously he's in France, and obviously he's just busy around nudging French people about, around, and obviously his performance, performing my way, and obviously shooting people with a paintball gun. Mm. What is with this movie? 
Uh, also, the, the only thing about to mention this movie is that John Landon never perform, never appeared in this. Well, he appears in archive footage, and that's about it. Because obviously, he finished, he left the Sex Pistols in January '78, and then Fu went on to do Public Image Limited and did his own thing, of course, and he refused to come back. And yeah, and also you got Edward Tudor as well, who's a friend of the Sex Pistols, who basically come back with them and also appears in the film he, he well he saw begins in the, in the middle as like audition for a new frontman the sex pistols along with other people and perform the song the tile song the great rock and the swindle and uh, again when he sings who killed bambi in the in a movie theater and goes absolute bonkers like he's all over the place i mean if you well he's sort of a crazy guy in real life ever to paul and what well, during his younger days he's just all over the place he's, he's, he's like lifting off and doing like some weird like sort of like some weird flinching movements and crossing his limbs and stuff like it's just okay um yeah and obviously Michael McLaren's in this movie as well uh I think I mentioned before and obviously it's all like it's basically like yeah it's just it's basically his vision of this mockumentary of the Sex Pistols. I mean, it doesn't really work perfectly. I mean, the best one to to watch is the film from the Fury from two thousand and was it two thousand and one? Directed by Julian Temple as well, but that's come from the Sex Pistols on point of view, from Lydon Jones, Cook, and Matlock. And Matlock, they do that, and they. I will discuss that film at some point anyway, but maybe not now. But it's so that's actually a better one than this. Actually, I mean, considering it was least, considering it wasn't released in late in the late seventies, even mine made it perfectly. But it was released in March of nineteen eighty for very unknown reasons. I don't know why. It's just like distributors and stuff like that. Maybe the Virgin. Well, I think Virgin had had a bit of a hand in, with this film as well. So just one of those things. Um, obviously, I think I think it applies in the arcs and the arts leave with the Flog of the Dead Horse compilation, in which this is like a fake turd on a gold disc with Virgin label on it. Probably that, or maybe you know, I know, I know Malcolm McLaren didn't like Richard Branson that you know um, that much. He's a bit calling him a hippie all the time, you know, going to like a hippie label and stuff like that. It wasn't his thing. Didn't like him that much. Still do it really. Another thing to mention about this film is the animated sequence. Now, obviously, the front cover and displays, I think, the animation a little bit there. It was also adored on some of the single sleeves that came out of the Grey Rolls, uh, the soundtrack album. And it's sort of okay. It's a bit, it's a bit jerky a little bit. It's a little, it's a bit jerky there as well because you've got the, you've got the sequence with Sid Vicious attacking a reporter who's actually trying to sleep with his girlfriend. You've got the end sequence with the song Free of the Ring and playing on a, on a pirate ship, pretending to be pirates. Okay. Alright. <laughs> really? Um, and some of, and, just, and just other stuff, like the put work for the sound of A&M. They used to do, did stuff like that. It's just, well... It's just all over the place, and... One sec. Sorry about that. So anyway, the yeah, animated sequences, of course, a bit jerky still. Not the best. Um, and the other thing I'm going to mention, I forgot to mention, is the open sequence, of course, is with the hanging and burning of the Sex Pistols. Though it's it's 
it's quite strange because it's it's certainly in medieval time in the medieval times all the Tudor times actually in Tudor times actually and they have dummies of the sex pistols in their clothing you know in the sort of like single clothing and there's the narration which is done by Malcolm McLaren who in his scurly voice is wearing a gimp mask what on earth is he doing what's with this movie what is this what is this controversy what is this mashup of complete nonsense and bollocks. Ah, I can never understand this movie. When I first watched it in full, I've seen little bits of it since then because my mum got a DVD of a recent DVD a few years back, which was released by Shaw Factory, which you can still get, or you can get the original version on the on VHS by Virgin Video. Oh, I don't know if there's a laser disc version. I don't know, but jeez, this is a bit of a downer for this finale. Oh, oh, why the hell? I don't know why. Ah, never mind. So anyway, Great Rock and Roll Swindle. It's a mockumentary of doing the Sex Pistols to do with the rise and fall of the band through the manager's eyes, Michael McLaren. He was responsible for this movie, for his ideas. It's directed by Julian Temple. Um, it's got the famous Sex Pistols, of course. You've got, well, you have Archive, you followed John, John Lydon, you've got Sid Fishers there, you've got uh, Paul Cook, Steve Jones, you got Helen Troy, you've got Evan Tudor Paul, you have just... And it's an absolute mess. However, it's it's sort of a cult movie now, it is. It's sort of, it's sort of a cult movie of the 80s now, for some apparent reason. I mean, if you look at, if you look at the movie, uh, there's a book of the movie post in the 80s, it's included in there, apparently. I have no idea why, but in itself, it is a cult classic. However, be warned when you watch it, it is absolute a mess and it messes your brain up slightly. I mean, it's all over the place. It's, it's like you have the nar you have sort of the narrative, and then it intercuts with other stuff, like your television reports, stuff with other members of the band going absolute crazy, singing covers. It is just one big battle mess. It's like a big, big polished turd. Why? Okay. Oh, so that's the great rockable swindle from 1980. Um. I have nothing else to say about this movie whatsoever, so I'll leave it there. Anyway, that's the finale of the fourth series, and I'll see you for, for the next video, whatever it'll be. Okay, thank you, bye.